Oh, hello everyone. I think we're live. I always say that. It's a lovely Friday afternoon here in the Philippines. It's been a warm one and a dry one since I got here. Let's just see. Yeah, it's currently around about 31 degrees. So, uh, oh, right. Before I get going, let's just see. Foreigner expat making money, Philippines channel. Hi, Alan. Hope you are well. Thank you very much. Yes, I'm doing great. I've been into town today. It's really hot in the town. It's hot here, but it's a lot hotter in the actual town centre. So we went into the shopping mall to get some aircon. <laughs> anyway, yep, doing well. Hope you're good as well. I see you have about a million questions here for me. Unfortunately, I can't answer all those questions because this live stream only has a specific length of time I plan to run it for. And I don't intend being here till next week, if you know what I mean. So <laughs> I'll probably get through each of the, all of them questions as time goes by. But when you're on YouTube, as you would probably know, you have to have a strategy. When you make a video, you talk about a specific subject, then you move on to the next video and talk about a different subject. You can't put it all in one. And by the looks of your questions, we could be here all bloody night. <laughs> so uh, I'll, I'll get through your questions at a later date, mate. But uh, at the minute, I can't go through that lot at the minute. Uh, Uh, Plum, hello, how are you doing? Wow, a lot of somebody's keen to talk. <laughs> yeah, a lot of questions. Uh, the trouble is, my channel is pretty small, and but the comments I get, whenever I put a video out, I normally get X amount of comments, and I have to try and go and reply to them comments, and sometimes I can be sat here for like three hours at a time trying to reply to them comments and by the time i spent three hours there's still loads more to go through so it gets a bit <laughs> a bit like mind numbing to say the least so uh but obviously uh, it's something you've got to do on youtube anyway good to hear from your plum now here's a familiar name mr Dwayne. how are you doing hope you're all okay whatever you do stay over there and this country's had it getting worse yes i know what can you do what can you do when the government is selling you out and doing nothing so uh i can't guarantee i'm going to stay here it might not work out in the long run but uh having a go seeing and seeing what happens anyway Dwayne, have a good one uh andrew hello what do you think of the Subaru you're driving? It's it's very nice, actually. It's quick. It's an all-wheel drive, like a permanent all-wheel drive vehicle. It's got a two-litre, like, flat engine in it, like flat four, like Porsches and that, and that. But it's ever so quick. Bloody hell. Yeah, it's really nice. It's not, like, luxurious inside or anything like that. It's pretty basic, but bloody hell for a... For, I mean, I don't know much about Subarus, but it's a nice car. <laughs> it gets around. And plus, it's got a timing chain on the engine. So uh, hopefully that will last forever. Uh, Mirik, hello from Mansfield. How are you doing? Hello in Mansfield. Nice to hear from you. Right, this particular live stream today, I'm only... Hello, Nicole. <laughs> I'm only talking about like specific subjects. So me and Tyler went to Davo City on Wednesday and we went to pick up our ACR cards. So, well, we had to apply for our ACR cards. So I'm just gonna give you like the rundown of what basically happened when we went over there. And I decided to take the bus because number one, I could have gone in the car and it would have been nice and convenient and all that. But I thought, I'm over here in the Philippines. 
I should get used to using the public transport and knowing how to get around if the car isn't always available. And I wanted to see what a bus German journey to the city would be like. And I know it's around about a three and a half hour journey from Maramag town to Davo city. So Ken dropped us off at the bus depot like six in the morning. We jumped on the bus and it was an air conditioned bus and that took us on our journey. And by the way, this bus for me and Tyler together to go from Maramag town to Davo city, I've broke some notes down so I don't forget all this. It was 740 pesos for the pair of us, the like, equivalent of £10.42 to take two people. And that's pretty damn cheap. Ah. Anyway, well, so we're on this, we're on this air conditioned bus. We must have got like a third of the way there. And bear in mind, from Maramag to Davo City, Mar well, Bukinon is full of mountains. We've got to go across the mountains to actually get there. And we're somewhere up in the mountains, and the bus pulls over at this like cafe sort of thing we didn't we didn't know what to expect because we thought the bus was going to go straight there to the city but it didn't it was stopping along the way dropping people off and picking people up so it wasn't one of them non-stop buses and it stopped at this cafe and everyone started getting off so me and tyler got off as well and they had all the food waiting so that the, the people at the cafe knew knew the bus was coming it was obviously a regular thing so uh, everyone gets off starts getting their refreshments and that so we get our drinks and food and all that about 15 minutes later we're back on the bus and on our way again now it must have been like two-thirds of the way there i didn't i didn't take a to go to the toilet when i was at the cafe which i should have done and i was i was on the bus and i was absolutely bursting for a piss so <laughs> this, this is my experience i said to tyler i really need to go a piss and he goes, there's a toilet there down by this. There's a step that goes down on the bus to the actual exit because it was one of them quite high up buses. You're sitting high up and it's got lots of storage space underneath. So I thought, OK, let's go for this. I knew before I even went into this toilet, because we're on the mountain roads, the bus is buffeting around a lot. So I thought this is going to be interesting. But there's a little latch on the toilet door from the, on the outside and it was locked. So I unlatched it, went inside and you've got a sink to your left and the little toilet cubicle in front of you it's a bit like one of them toilets on an aeroplane <clears throat> but oh God, i don't even know why i'm talking about this but i shut the door behind me and the latch was broken but the door seemed to click in place i thought okay that's that's fine so i had to put my feet either side of this compartment to hold myself and put my head on the wall in front of me to hold myself steady as i was trying to take a piss but then the door opened behind me. I heard it open. So I looked round and the door was starting to open. So I shut the door again and then it started to open again. So then I realised the door was going to keep opening. There was no latch to lock it from the inside. So I actually had to hold the door with my left hand, take a piss with my right hand, use my head and my feet to steady myself as the bus was buffeting around the roads. But, I, you know, I got, <laughs> I, got, I got it done and it was it was like fantastic it was it was a relief <laughs> so i got out of that it was all an experience but i don't think i want to be using a toilet on one of them coaches again and it was also it was one of them toilets that you can't flush it it's an automatic flush mechanism so it was already dirty when i went in there and it hadn't flushed so <clears throat> lucky it was only taking a piss anyway after that we got into Davo City, the bus pulls up at this bus depot where we all get out. Almost immediately, the moment we got off the bus, a couple guys come up to us and go and handed us crash helmets. They were like moped courier riders or moped taxi riders. And we thought, okay, that's convenient. That saves us going out of the bus depot and getting a taxi because plenty of cars that are as taxis they're toyota vios in in the in davo city but we thought yeah the mopeds are already here let's do this so me and tyler both jumped on a moped each and they took us straight from the bus depot all the way to the immigration center which was yeah ecoland bus terminal to jp laurel avenue which is where the b1 immigration center is 
which is an equivalent of around about 6.8 kilometers. And they say on the maps about 20, 21 minutes to get there. Quite a journey. But anyway, we were weaving in and out of the traffic. These moped riders, they were very good, very skilled. We're sitting on the back and they're just weaving in and out of all the traffic and everything. They knew exactly where to go. They're very good indeed. So they dropped us off at the immigration centre. Now, when you get to the immigration centre in Davo, you walk into the main yard and there's like a guy on a table on the right hand side. I asked him for the extension forms for another two month extension he gave us the forms and i thought i ain't gonna fill it out here i can't be bothered so me and tyler got our forms we went over to mcdonald's had ourselves something to eat and a drink and we filled the forms out in mcdonald's we then strolled back to the immigration center handed our forms in at the uh, main counter and the guy looked at the the forms and then he said uh ah yeah, the receipt we got from the last 29 day extension, we needed a photocopy of that. Well, they needed a photocopy of that. So we had to then come out of the immigration center with all our paperwork, go around the corner and there's a beauty salon just around the corner to the right. And the funny thing is, as soon as we went around the corner, one woman at the beauty salon opened the flipping door and sort of like waved at us, come here, come here. And it's like, I'm just wondering, did the guy at the immigration centre get on the blower and go, we've got a couple of them here, they're on their way. <laughs> but, but yeah, I don't, I don't think so, but it was, it was quite funny. We went in the salon, the old women in there were quite a laugh, we had a conversation with them, but they photocopied our receipt forms. We took them back in the immigration centre, handed our forms in, sat down. We then got called up to pay the fee we had to pay for our ACR cards which was 16,200 pesos, which in British money is equivalent to 228 pounds. That's for two of us, mind you. So if it's for one person, you've got a half that. But that's what it cost us. <clears throat> I don't think it's going to be that much next time because next time we won't need ACR cards as they'll be issued. But they gave us the receipts after about 30 minutes of being in the immigration centre. So it was quite quick. They actually got the paperwork done and we were out quite quickly. But when they handed us the paperwork back and our receipts for the payment and everything, the woman goes to us, uh, come back in one month for your ACR cards. And I thought, I knew I wasn't going to get them on that day. I knew that was coming. But flipping heck, I didn't expect it to be a month. So I was like, kind of like, Jesus. But, <laughs> but there you go. What can you do? We're in Filipino time now. Anyway, for Mr... Bucket list. I haven't, Bunga, Bunga. I haven't mentioned this yet, but uh, this bottle of water that I keep picking up on the live stream and putting down because I've got a nervous problem. So every time I pick this bottle of water up and have a drink, I shall put it back down again and stop bloody messing with it. <clears throat> there was another video I done where I had a pen in my hand and I kept picking the pen up putting it down, picking it up, putting it down. <laughs> I got some comments on that one as well. So I'm going to leave the flipping water alone. Anyway, so that's where we're at. We left the immigration centre. We had the receipts for the payment and everything, but we didn't have our ACR cards. The big problem here is the receipts they gave us do not have a number, an ACR number. So we've got nothing. So basically we've got to wait another 30 days or so, go back to Davo City to pick our ACR cards up before we can do anything with them. So that's just the way it is. But that's where we're at at the moment. Anyway, I'll quickly jump onto a few of the comments. Wherever we are, I've lost track. Aha. Uh -huh. You've rented your house in Peterborough. Is it... It's in Huntingdon. Huntingdon. Yes, it's in Huntingdon, not Peterborough. Uh, hello, blonde man. How are you? Non-turbo Subarus are non-interference engines. Well, that's, that's good to know. But I'll tell you something. I'm bloody well hoping nothing does go wrong with that engine. It looks well expensive. <laughs> it's like a flat four engine. It's got a nice timing chain in it, so I'm guessing that's going to last well. And the oil and filter was replaced before I come over here. 
So, uh, but no, it's quite a low mileage car as well. So I'm hoping it's going to last. <clears throat> uh, Christian, hello from cold and rainy Estonia. Bloody hell, you're a long way away. Well, mind you, you in Brit you lot in Britain are a long way away. Est well, hello then. How are you doing? Thanks for jumping in and uh, watching me in the Philippines. <laughs> Who else have we got? Philip, hello. Good luck, mate. I wish I could do what you're doing. You've come this far. Don't turn the back or you'll regret it. <coughs> it's, it's, it's more a case of I would rather do this and fail than not do it at all. Even if I failed frigging miserably, even if I lasted another two days here and it all turned to frigging shit and I have to go back to England and go back to work or whatever, at least the way I see it is that I, at least I've tried. So that's all it comes down to, really. You get to a certain point in your life where if you do nothing and sit in your bedroom, you may well regret it when you get to a certain age because there's going to come a time when you're too old. So... All the money in the world is not going to buy your time or health. So uh, that's the way it is. I, I could be quite happy right now, back in England, still at work. I could be earning plenty of money and I'd have a nice fat bank account. But what am I going to do with it? I want to live and I want to live and I want to experience it in the world. That's what it comes down to. I want to go somewhere. I want to do things. Tomorrow, if I can say it right, I'm going to Dan Kangan, which is not actually far from here. It's just past Don Carlos way. Uh, there's a waterfall there. So I'm hoping I can go under this waterfall and get showered in it. So we'll see. I will take my camera with me. Anyway, thank you, Philip. <clears throat> Hello, Mr. Dave. Good morning, Alan, or in your case, good afternoon. Yes, it's almost early evening now. It is afternoon, though. It's Mayanyan Gabi for evening, and Mayanyan Hapon for good afternoon. I've learned a couple words, but not many. <laughs> uh, Austin, hello. Bet you aimed at the. <laughs> I'll, I'll tell you something. I'm glad because it was an experience. It's like, it's like, how can I put it? When you go out, just even it's for the day, and you have experiences, you do things, you do this, that, and the other, you've got stories to tell. Whether it's good or bad, it doesn't really matter as long as it's not too bad. You've got stories to tell, and that's what it's all about. That's what life's all about. Getting out and about, new experiences, plenty to talk about. So anyway, Austin, good on you. Uh, Kenny, hello. I used the visa agent, a couple of doors down, 600 peso, drop passport off and pick. Yes, I've heard. Well, I'm not heard. I do know you can do that. You can use an agent, and for I guess for for various people, it's it's a whole load of hassle eliminated <laughs> from your life. If you get an agent, they'll know how to fill the forms in. They'll know what to do. They'll organise it. They'll sort it all out for you, and you can just do nothing <laughs> and enjoy the joy, enjoy the view. I think personally, if you were doing what's called a 13A visa, which is your permanent residency visa. That's where maybe getting an agent would probably be a good idea. Uh, I've heard they, they can be troublesome. But <clears throat> I won't use an agent for two reasons. Reason number one, they cost money. <laughs> it's, it's not so much that. But it's, it's the main reason is I actually like going out for the trip to the office in Davo. Now I've got it worked out. I can either take the car or I can take the bus. And it's a day out for me in the city. I can go around to the SM Mall. I can go and explore Davo City a bit. It's, it's, it's fun. You know, get a McDonald's or whatever while I'm down there. 
that's that's what it is for me basically i like to be out and about and doing something plus i can take my phone with me unfortunately on wednesday my phone wasn't charged up properly it was pretty pretty much dead by the time i got off the bus so i wasn't able to really film anything i did get a few clips but i might put i might stick them in a video later on ah. Do you know what? I hope I'm not messing with that water bottle, but I did take a little drink of it. Bucket list, I hope you're watching. <laughs> anyway, uh, Mr. Dave, maybe try having a dump on a coach. <laughs> no, I don't, I'm not even going to go there. Here's a tip. Here's a tip if you've never been to the Philippines and you come over here and you want to go to the toilet. And number two, we say, bring your own toilet paper. You, I mean, this the Philippines is not the Singapore airport where they've got all the luxurious toilets with all the paper and everything. In the Philippines, chances are you will find maybe a toilet if, if you are lucky, but you will also find a pot next to it with a little dipper in it where you have to splash the water up your ass to wipe to wipe wash your bum because there is no toilet paper. In actual fact, I think the pipes here are thinner, so they don't like you putting toilet paper down the toilets anyway. So, uh, be warned. <laughs> toilets are not very hot subjects over here. You have to make do with what you've got. Obviously, if you're in the city and department stores and stuff like that, they'll cater for you. But if you get out into rural Philippines, yeah, you might find a hole in the ground if, <laughs> if you're lucky. Uh, and, Josh, Joshua, Joshua. Uh, hello, Alan from Valencia, Spain. Hello, how are you doing over there in Spain? At least you've got a sunny climate as well. I've never been to Spain, but I'm sure it's bloody lovely. Uh, Mark, hello. Hello to you, Mark. Where are you in the world? That's what I want to know. And you, Graham. Alan, you look years younger. Do I? I haven't even shaved yet. And I'll do that tomorrow morning. <clears throat> it's uh, it's quite relaxing out here. Plus, I'm getting a suntan. I could I could talk about life in England, you know, Mr. Bucket List. I'm having a quick drink, and I'm putting it down. Stay. No, I'm getting a bit of a tan out here. I'm, I'm not the kind of person that generally my face never seems to tan. But uh, I'm getting one out here. That's the sun is intense. If you walk out in the sun, it's like, boom, it's on you. And you like you don't want to stay in the sun for too long. <laughs> you want to get some shade. But yeah, well, thank you very much, Graham. Well, I do like it if, I'm, if I am getting younger. That would be very nice. Uh, watch Whisper. Hello from me. Hope you are co you're okay. Yes, doing well. Thank you very much. I shall adjust. I'm on my uh, laptop today. I have an iMac, which I like because it's got bigger letters in it. And uh, But this little laptop, I have to use it from time to time to keep the battery going. Uh, Adrian, hello. Do you miss working on cars? <clears throat> occasionally i do it wasn't all bad most of my working life i did enjoy working on cars when i first started working for steve's taxis bloody hell i didn't want to go home i was enjoying it so much it was fantastic but as i got into my 50s it was becoming a bit of a drag <laughs> there's dogs there's chickens, there's every animal under the sun around here. Uh, where, where the hell was I? Uh, yeah. If I had to go back and work on cars, I could still do it, but I wouldn't really want to. I think it's after, after working for like 40 years of my life, I needed it to do something else. And I'm not really doing anything else, but you know doing nothing really <laughs> but i needed a break so uh needed a change of scenery a different lifestyle 
but yeah, I do miss it a little bit. But I don't really get to do anything out here. My skills are kind of redundant out here. I would have to learn completely new skills. Uh, Watch Whisper. You're doing a fantastic job, yet don't go back. You seem so relaxed now, no stress. Well, there isn't so much stress out here. I think it's a very relaxed place. In fact, the whole country, the way I can see that the whole ethics to everything is, is kind of relaxed as well. So uh, there, there's no urgency to get anything done, if you see what I mean. Not like in England, it's like snap, snap, snap. Come on, we need this done. It's, it's not like that here. It just seems to be a, it'll be done when it's done, you know. <laughs> but yeah, no, I'm just seeing how things go. Taking it one day at a time. Uh, <clears throat> GPZB2, hello. Germany, flipping it. If you're in the hole in June, July, give us a shout. I'll buy you a few San Miguel's. Do you know what? Actually, I've had a, a San Miguel over here, and I know that's that's kind of like the main beer, but I think the Red Horse actually tastes better, you know. And the Red Horse is the stronger beer. I am going to Bahal at some point, so I'll remember that. The trouble is, I tend to. Uh, because I get so many comments, I always forget. So what I do now, I take a picture and I'll put that picture in my favorites for all my important information so I can access really quickly. Because you know when you go to your photos on your, on your bloody phone, it's like brrr, you're scrolling through it and trying to find one particular photo or something. Now I'll remember that one. So thank you. <laughs> if I am out, out that way during their months, I will give you a shout, definitely. Thank you very much. Hi, Dwayne. Don't forget, if you get hitched to Ken, I'll pop over and be your best man, just like you did for me. All the best. Well, thank you very much, Dwayne. You'll certainly like it over here, but you just, it's just don't go in the sun for too long. <laughs> It's, it's the kind of heat, it's the sticky heat over here, and it's really hot. So uh, when you're in like 35 degree temperatures every day, and you've not got no air conditioning, all you've got really got is a fan, or maybe you can stand somewhere where the, the wind's blowing through a, a passageway onto you, it's, uh, it can kind of get you after a while. But yeah, that's very nice of you. Mm. Right, where are we? Uh, Kenny, you should have came today and stayed for the weekend. Big festival. Oh, is there? I didn't even know that. Maybe next time then. I am going back to Davo in a month's time to pick the card up. I am going to a festival though, uh, soon when it starts. That's in the one in uh, Malai Balai. I hear there's a, there's a big street festival there with dancing and all sorts going on. So I am going to go to that one. Uh, Darren, I'm in Cebu. Yes, I think you said last time. Thank you very much. I've never been to Cebu. So uh, one day I shall get there. If, I, if I'm here <laughs> long enough, we'll, we'll see how that one goes. Uh, Christian. I like your videos from Philippines. I have been there also. Cebu Bahol, Secure Island. Oh, I hear that Secure Island's a nice place to go. There are so many places here in the Philippines you can go that are like heaven on earth, I believe. But it's like, I haven't been to any of them. <laughs> I'm here in Mindanao, like three hours from the coast. So, uh, I've done very little since I've been here. I've just been exploring like the little towns and cities around the area I'm in. But I guess, I guess in time, if it all works, I keep saying if it all works, I will then spread further afield and go to different places. I want to go and catch a ferry and go to Camegan Island and Bahol. So uh, hopefully that's in the pipeline. My name is Alan Too, but I'm in UK. 
Well, hello, Alan. How are you doing in the UK? It's not so bad. At least you've got summertime coming. I do like the UK summers. That's the, that's the thing about the UK. It's in the summertime, <clears throat> it can be daylight at nine o'clock at night. Whereas here, the downside is it's dark by six all year round. So you've got to make the most you can of each day. <clears throat> Adam, greetings from British Columbia. Bloody hell. Do you have, do they have pork sausage scratchings there? Uh, pass. Next question. I do not know. I have not seen them. I'd actually have to ask Ken, but she's not here somewhere. She's over somewhere else. I've not seen them. I know they don't have pork sausages, and if they do, it's not around this area. The only sausages they, they seem to have here are them bloody hot dog style sausages. Uh, uh, Hillbilly John, hello. Hello, Alan. How long should it take a competent mechanic to change all four glow plugs on a transit custom, in your opinion? Uh, I have not changed. That's one of the newer newer transits, isn't it? I've not changed them glow plugs on one of them. So I have no idea whatsoever what kind of job it's going to be. I don't know whether you've got to remove the manifold or anything. It's something I just haven't done. So uh, <clears throat> the best thing would be to find someone who's got auto data. I used to have that, but I don't have the login details now and kind of get the repair time to do that. That would give you an indication. Whatever the repair time is, if you probably doubled it or trebled it, <laughs> you might be able to do it in that time. But no, I, I really don't know the answer to that. Uh, Mondo Daft as a brush. Hello. I thought you would have all the I's dotted and crossed the T's <laughs> and docks before flying over. Suppose marriage to Ken would help. Well, uh, yes, that, uh, obviously that would help. But <laughs> that may well be in the future. So uh, we'll see. <clears throat> but no, you can't. You can't dot the I's and cross the T's over here. I think you can make all the best plans in the world and it still wouldn't be right. There's, there's so many unknowns here that you, you just don't know until you actually come across it. So uh, it's just a totally different world. And if you think you've got everything sorted out, you haven't. He don't want to marry me. <laughs> yeah, Ken. What? Do they sell pork scratchings over here? No. That's uh, unless we, we make our own... Unless we're in the market, no, we don't have that. Oh, so, so that's, oh. that's a no. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no pork scratchings. Uh, jo jo I don't know how to say your name here. Joshua. Jos no, Jose. <laughs> Jose? Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, anyway. Uh, Just. I work in the factory where the Mondeo Mark 5s are made. Possibly. Something in like Alumus something, Valencia. I, yeah, they were made in Spain. Very good car. Yeah, all the Mondeos that, that Steve's taxis used, they were made in Spain. And if I'm if I'm right here, they were black. They were all black, and they were painted in Spain red. So that that's what I do know. But anyway, that's interesting to know you worked in that factory. Bloody hell. Platform man one. Hello. You're busy doing nothing. Yes, exactly. Busy doing nothing and have all day to do it in. <laughs> uh, Mon Mondo, you would have to train and put your feet up as a Toyota mechanic. <laughs> I don't think I would want to work on Toyotas. It does make me wonder, though, the amount of Toyota pickup trucks out here, high, high luxes. Like that. There's loads of them everywhere. I mean, I wonder when they go wrong, if they actually get repaired at the main dealer, or whether a lot of these side garages actually deal with them. Because I'm kind of figuring a lot of the little garages probably wouldn't touch them on the, main, the bigger jobs if you had to do a clutch or something. 
uh, fellow tractor hello glad you're living your best life so far well it kind of is so uh i've got all the freedom in the world here but we'll see <laughs> as long as i don't get bored of it uh, mike morning from a lovely wet bolton is it still raining over there bloody hell do you know what it was raining pretty much weeks before i left the uk and i think it's been raining ever since almost so uh, we've not we've seen a, about two major downpours of rain since i've been over here and they've lasted all of about less than an hour in like over two months now and it's like a drought at the minute so if it was to rain over here it would be much appreciated uh kenny pork scratchings are available chikaran they're called oh well if i do come across them i'll let you know but i haven't seen anything like that but they're... You don't eat you don't like it all oh, right having the market if you want yeah, I guess it's. I and guess it's. As well. I guess it's knowing where to look. But you don't like pork. <laughs> because like pork scratchings would be somewhere like I'd go into a convenience store, but over here, <coughs> the main convenience stores are seven and they've got lots of local little stores, and it's like I don't really know what they've got in there. It's all like <laughs> stuff that I wouldn't buy anyway. Uh, White van man, hello. Pork sausage and scratchings, both in supermarket. Chichuan are scratchings. Not sure how they spell it. Yeah, I will keep a lookout. But I am in Mindanao, like rural area. So <laughs> if I see it, I, I will actually buy some of it. And I'll, I'll hold the packet up on the next live stream. Uh, Mr. Dave, <clears throat> on your last visit to the Philippines, you were required to take a vaccine to visit an island you wanted to go to if i remember is this still the case <clears throat> it was Camigan island yeah they wouldn't let us get on the ferry because we weren't vaccinated uh we didn't get vaccinated because that could have caused a whole load of shit if we if we'd have gone to get vaccinated that day and we'd have come up positive or something then we were in probably been quarantined and locked up and god only knows what so it just wasn't worth it but no, as far as I'm aware, they have dropped the bullshit. So now if I went to Cagayan de Oro, where the ferry port is, I can get straight on the ferry and go straight across now. I'm pretty sure that is the case. Uh, Mark, record your wedding. <laughs> uh, Darren, car car have something similar to scratching oh, okay uh jacqueline jacqueline moore hello hello to you we are not talking about marriage because the first day we speak with each other i told alan i want a sperm donor and he doesn't like to have a baby so i don't like marriage either <laughs> straight right <laughs> Uh, uh, Jacqueline, what new subscriber? Have you rented your house in? Yes, I have. Yes, uh, that's rented out, and that's that's how it will stay. I, I'll keep my house. Uh, by chance, did you already try? Tell me. No, I haven't. <laughs> no, I haven't. I, I, I don't tend to try things that I don't know what they are. But I'll have to look that one up. And I haven't even got round to doing that yet. Uh, Mondo, nice to see Ken, hence my comment on the last live walking stream with Tyler. Should we be buying a hat? <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Will everybody stop talking about marriage, please, for the moment? Uh, fractal, what's that? Fractal of God. Well done on escaping the third world falling state that is the UK. Yeah, <clears throat> I would hope, I would like to think that things get better over there. 
but looking at the political parties i can see labor getting in at the next election and uh they're just going to be more of the same uh, mike <clears throat> It never bleeding stops raining, Ellen. I did a wet belt last week on a Peugeot 208 2019 three cylinder. Also blocked the pickup pipe for the oil pump. Not a nice job. No, I bet it's not. Yeah. And I know them, them belts, they get tiny fragments coming off and which block the pickup pipes. It's the same with them, them eco boom engines as well, isn't it? And the Fords. Yeah. Nasty. Uh, Mr. John Boy, hi Alan, finally caught you live, was just about to go to sleep as I am working nights, oh well thank you very much, <laughs> yeah you must get in after a night's work and I don't know, what, what is it, I mean after you work a whole night, are you tired in the morning or, or are you still buzzing and is it hard to get to sleep during the day, I don't know, because I always work days, I did used to work, well I work days for uh, going back some years now, I would work a day at the garage and then I would drive a taxi in the evening. So uh, I was kind of glad to get to bed when I did because I was doing like 18 hour a day shifts sometimes. Uh, Ken heard marriage and instantly came out. <laughs> yeah. uh, Mondo, any food you're missing from UK? Think those ice and pizzas are three pound 50 each you made for Tyler on your live stream. <clears throat> yeah, we, we, we like the uh, the pizzas out of Iceland. But uh, the only pizzas I really get over here now are takeaways or we get them at the cafe. They're quite cheap anyway. So we, we have them cooked. And you, you can get them takeaway anyway from, from the shop. But I don't actually go into the supermarkets and buy frozen pizzas anymore. But yeah, there's, there's lots of foods I miss. <laughs> as, as much as I put Tesco's down... I could go in Tesco's and I could buy anything I wanted that I did eat. But over here, everything I ate, it's hard to find. So uh, it's difficult. But yeah, <laughs> it, it's, it's completely different, the food, than the supermarkets. It's all packet and canned stuff over here in the supermarkets. If you want fresh meat and stuff like that, you really have to go to the markets and buy it and then cook it. So, okay, you can have really nice meals over here. You've just got to cook it. You can't just, you know, in England, a lot of meals you can buy, ready meals and stuff like that. Nice and easy if it's a quick one. But uh, over here, it's, it's kind of like they don't sell that stuff. Uh, hello, Fajura. How are you doing? Uh, Adam. See Oh, thank you for a pint, mate, and some oh, some some chicharron pork. Well, pork scratches. Yes, thank you very much. Well, I will keep an eye out for them. In fact, when I go into town again and I look at, the, I go to the market, or if I go to the main supermarket, which I don't often go into now, I'll have a good look and see if I can find some, and I will buy some. So, uh, well, thank you very much, uh, Mr. John Boy. I'm a taxi driver, so I'm kind of tired, but I'm still awake for a bit. It's more mentally drained. Yeah. God, you know, I remember I remember the days when I used to drive a taxi. It would be like a Friday or Saturday night, and that'd be after a day's work at the garage. I'd go home, get get a wash, get changed, get in the taxi about seven o'clock in the evening, and I'd work through until probably three in the morning, maybe four in the morning. My last run would normally be from like Peterborough, which would be 20 miles away. And I must say, there were some nights I was actually like, you're driving down the, that, the motorway and your eyes are, are like, keep shutting and you're straining to keep your eyes open. Pretty dangerous. So uh, you have to open the window sometimes and even got passengers in the back to try and stay awake. Uh, they were the days. Uh, Thank you, Adam from Kenner's Farm. Uh, greetings from UK and Jamaica. 
your videos are a breath of fresh. Well, thank you very much. Not many people watches them, so <laughs> thanks for watching them anyway. I do like to make a video when I go out sometimes. It gives me something to do. Abby, I'm going to make the channel. You're going where? I'm going to make the channel. Oh, okay. She's going to buy some pork scratching, she says. But I'll probably be finished this live stream by the time she gets back. Uh, Mondo. What's your go-to street food? Do you have a favourite trader? Uh, we we basically have here in, in Maramag Town, there is Biaz Pizza. It's a little cafe. It's all open air. It's lovely in there. We have Biano's Pizza, which they do like this fully loaded pizza of all their toppings, which is absolutely fantastic. I love that. And... There is a Ala Turka Turkish restaurant, which we go in quite a lot. They make, oh, it's like brilliant, <laughs> lovely food. And this, so you give you a price wise, Turkish restaurant, okay. We can go in there, we'll have a meal for three or four people, and we will always come out and we've spent less than 20 pound in English money. And we come out completely stuffed. And that's food and drinks. Absolutely lovely. Hello, Kay. How are you doing? It's a lovely evening over here in the Philippines. How are you? Uh, fractal of God. Your story is similar to mine. I moved to the Caribbean in 2009 and married a lady there but we made the mistake of moving back to the uk i'd love to move back abroad it looks really nice there <coughs> i can tell you something for now if i was to marry over here ken say for instance i would never take her back to the uk to live it wouldn't happen and I think the main thing is she would be bored out of her bloody mind over there. Over here, regardless of whether I'm here or not, makes no difference. She has her parents, her cousins, her sisters, her family. Everyone is around her. It's like the whole area. She knows everyone. She has her animals that she looks after. It keeps her busy. She has her whole life here. If she went to England, what would she do? Sit in the house and, and do what? <laughs> <laughs> There's nothing to do. It's boring over there. Even if she got a job, I don't think she'd like it. I really don't. So uh, I think some people are best uh, where they belong. Uh, Jer Bork, Crispy King Chicken takes beating. <laughs> yes, I call it the crusty cat, the crusty crab. But yes, the, the Crispy King is down the road from here. There's a junction that goes one way to Davo City and the other way to Don Carlos. And there's a Crispy King right on the corner. I can go down there nine o'clock at night and it's just buzzing with people. Oh, flipping everywhere. But the, the Crispy King, the chicken, it's about 50. It's just over 50 pence per drumstick in English money. I don't know what that is, it's about 44 pesos a drumstick. It's not cheap, but it's bloody nice drumsticks, really nice chicken. Very nice, yes. Lovely. We get we go down there quite often. Uh Craig. Hi then, how are you doing from where's that? Atherstone? I don't know where that is, Craig. But hello anyway. Anyway, where the hell was I? I have to look at my notes here, you see. We'd come out of the immigration centre. We'd got our uh, receipts and everything for payment. We'd paid for our ACR cards. We'd been approved and everything. But we've been told we can't have our ACR cards for, into a month's time. We have to come back to Davo City in a month's time to collect our cards. So there's a, like a big mail 
just opposite more or less the actual immigration center we had a quick walk through there it's a bit of an old looking mail there's a big sm mail further up north in the sea which we didn't go to but but behind that mail there is a little camera shop called dan's camera shop if you ever look for it don't blink or you'll miss it i want to buy and this is for everybody else's uh, good here for my mobile phone i want to buy a dja dji osmo 6 so if i'm doing a walk-in live stream i'm not holding the phone in my hand so i'm not going to get shaky footage and also it comes with a little tripod so you can put the phone on the stand and you can do a time lapse or something like that with it so i thought that'd be a handy little thing to have <clears throat> and i thought that dan's camera store they advertise that they have them so i walk into the bottom door of this you can see dan's camera store it's on the first floor so i walk into the lower floor through the door and there's just a staircase i thought this looks a bit odd so i got this staircase and then there's just this door in front of me it looks like a flipping sex shop or something like that <laughs> and i thought is this where we're supposed to be but someone come out the door and then you could see all the camera equipment inside so i walked inside the shop and it's nice little folk, nice little uh, camera equipment store loads of stuff in there i said to i said to him have you got the dgr dji osmo 6 he goes oh yeah yeah oh 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 sorry no we're out of stock i don't know when the next lot of stock's going to be so that was that <laughs> so i thought i thought now nah, okay i'm not going to go hunting around davo city to try and find this uh me and tyler then got on got come out of the mail uh well out of dan's camera store went around the side of the mail and we thought we're going to go back to the bus de depot and head back to booking on to maramag and i thought should we get a taxi because we've not actually taken a ride in a proper taxi a car and there's thousands of what's called Toyota Vios, and they're all taxis. And uh, so we jumped in this taxi, and I said to the guy, we need to go to the bus depot so we can get a bus to booking on. And he didn't speak very good English, but he, he totally understood what we were saying. So we got in the car with him, and off we went. And remember, this is like a 6.8 kilometre drive across the city back to the bus depot. And we're driving and driving and driving. And the traffic in Davo City is pretty intense. It's it's a bumper to bumper. But uh, I'd, I'd say it took us a good 20 minutes to get there. But he dropped us off right at the bus depot. And he had a meter running in his car. And the meter said uh, 184 pesos after about a 20 minute journey and that 184 pesos is wherever i put it yeah two pound 59 in english money for like a 20 minute journey and i expected that to be a heck of a lot more i thought i mean for, for two of us in that car that was cheaper than the two mopeds but there again the mopeds we had a moped each but i thought to myself Getting in a taxi in Davo City, are we going to get ripped off? Are we going to get scammed? Are we this? Are we that? And no, we didn't because he had a meter running and it was so cheap. I mean, to me, to maybe to some of the locals, that might be expensive, but £2.50, £2.60 <laughs> to go halfway across the city is pretty damn good if you ask me. So anyway, we get out the taxi we then have to walk into the bus terminal and this is the Ecoland bus terminal. You can't just like walk into where the buses are. You've got to go through a certain entry point where they have a desk and they have like guys there that are searching your bags for bombs and stuff like that. In fact, when we were passing one of the malls, we could see the security guard there with the, the long stick and the mirror that he was putting under the cars that were going in to search for bombs. But anyway, back at this at this bus terminal, they searched our bags for bombs and, and guns or anything like that. And uh, then they let us into the, into the actual bus terminal. Uh, and as soon as we got into the bus terminal, a guy come straight up to us and goes, where are you, where are you going? And we said, well, we're going to Bukinon, uh, Maramag. And 
he said okay i'll show you the bus i'll show you the bus and as we were walking with him there must have been another three guys all coming across as well trying to ask us where we were going and he was shooing them off because he already had us <laughs> do you know do you know what i will i will say okay i mean i gave him a tip that's what you do you, you give him a tip you give him some pesos whatever you want to give him for showing you the bus if you're somebody who knows what bus you're getting on and you don't need any kind of assistance then you just say no no i'm okay and you go to your bus and get on but if you're somebody that doesn't know what bus to get on or what to do these guys are quite valuable because they will point you exactly where you need to go and they will put you on the right bus so is that they are giving a very good service and i like that it's it's very helpful so i mean obviously in time i'm going to know what bus this that and the other and i'm not going to need their help but at the moment while i've only been here a short while and i'm not totally clued up on what i've got to do it's people like that that are helping me along the way so I, i'm getting things done a lot easier anyway we get on the bus and the bus we get on was was a, actually a bit of a higher class bus than we came to Davo city on and uh, it was a bit more expensive this this bus was 910 pesos which was 12 pound 82 for the pair of us to get back which was still bloody cheap anyway there was there was one thing i've left out <laughs> which I, i'm going to i'm going to point out here when we were on the bus going to Davo, there is an army checkpoint on the way before you get into the city where they stop vehicles, they stop buses and everything. They are searching for terrorists and known criminals. Now, I have not been stopped like this before because on the cars, I didn't even look at the walls in, in, in the actual place where we get stopped. But that they pulled a bus over, the soldier with his big assault rifle he comes on the coach and all all the people that are on the coach get off the coach he then comes on the coach me and tyler were still on the coach i thought they were all getting off for a piss break or something like that <laughs> but they were but they weren't it was a checkpoint an army checkpoint so the soldier comes on the coach he looked at me and tyler and didn't say a word he then just searches around the top, around the coach, around the seats and that to make sure there was nobody else. And he walked back off the coach. And then everybody else that got off the coach then gets back on. And obviously we're on our way again. But when we were at that checkpoint, I look through the window. And where the army checkpoint is, there's a great big board up. And it's got the faces of all the criminals. And there must have been loads of them. And what was interesting was each criminal or wherever they are had a bounty on their head and a lot of them had like 20,000 well some had quite quite low actually like 2,000 pesos or something like that about 30 pound but some of them had quite high bounties like 200,000 pesos so depending how bad a criminal you, you are it's, it's obviously how much of a bounty you got on your head so uh <clears throat> It was quite funny to see. I mean, in England, you don't sort of like see one pictures of wanted criminals with a bounty on their head, but you do over here. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's uh, it's very interesting, I have to say. Anyway, I better move on with some of these comments, then, then I'll carry on. Uh, H. Henry, hello. Hi, then, and Tyler Ken. Uh, it's John from near Coventry. Oh, hello there in Coventry. Uh, it's rain all days here. I love the sun. Don't like mosquito, though evil things. Yes, they are. Are there many road accidents there? What about speed cameras? <coughs> I've not seen a speed camera. There probably are speed cameras, but it's probably in the major cities. Uh, I've seen a few accidents, uh, few and far between. Mainly, it's uh, stuff coming off the back of lorries, things like that. We saw all the sugar cane come off the back of one of the lorries. And uh, there has been a few motorcycle accidents. So uh, it does happen. 
probably more often than not, but I just haven't seen that many. So uh, the roads are pretty, it's, it's strange. It's, it's strange out here, the way the roads are. A lot of the vehicles, they don't actually seem to travel that fast. Not like the motorways you get in England. I know the speed limit's 70, but the vehicles out here, they're, they're not actually going that fast for the most part. And in the towns and that, they're all filtering in and all that because there's, there's no traffic lights. There are traffic lights out here, but you have to get to the bigger bigger towns and that to actually have them sort of things in place. But I, I haven't seen much. I mean, there was one bad accident down the road here a few weeks back. I didn't actually see it. We went past it, but it was dark. But it was, that was a motorcycle accident, and it was quite bad. So uh, it's not something I've really come across that much. So. Uh, uh, Anthony, hello, Alan. Looks a nice day there. It's, it's like this every day. Every single day you can get either wall-to-wall -wall sunshine or a bit of cloud cover. You may get a tiny little bit of rain if you're lucky. Uh, Mondo, have you been to the optician and waiting for your new eyes? I I surprise there is a, not a shop for used specs to choose from recycling. Uh, not yet, but there's an opticians in Valencia City. So and I'm actually going there maybe Sunday or Monday. Uh, I've got other reasons to go there, but I'm going to go to the opticians because the, the problem I've got is now it's like there's someone, trying, there's someone trying to ring me, but it's like a pain in the ass when I'm doing a live stream. Uh, do you know, I've, I've lost my train of thought now. I'm going to the opticians because the problem I've got with my eyes is when it's like the light gets a little bit dim, say I go into a, a restaurant and the lighting is dim and you've got the menu, I can't see the small letters on, on the menu. So I have to get my phone out and maybe put the light on it to, to see what I'm looking at. That's because it, it's like, I, and if I sit back, okay, and I look at it from a distance, I can see them better. It's like I'm on a little 14-inch Mac Pro here. Uh, I've got I've got Google Chrome up, and I can see all the writing here, even though it's in small text. But so I'm having to strain a little bit to see the text. So I know that I'm, I'm I do need to get my eyes tested and <clears throat> get some glasses. But there again, I guess that comes of age anyway. I mean, I'm 56 now, so. Uh, I've not needed glasses until now, but I, I'm getting to the point where for reading, I definitely do need some. But there again, I, I guess for anyone else out there who's in a similar situation, you'll know how it is. You can get up, go outside, do whatever you're doing during the day, and you can see perfectly well. But when you have to read small text in, in dimly lit areas and stuff like that, it, you, you like straining your eyes and like that, and it gets blurry. So, yeah, I am going to go over to the opticians and get my eyes checked and see if they can sort me out a pair of glasses. So I will be doing that. Uh, did you have to take anti-malaria medication? No, I didn't take anything before I came out here. <clears throat> I didn't take zero, no injections or anything. I thought, stuff it. After the pandemic, I thought, all of a sudden, I don't want no one putting no needles in my arm. Go away. <laughs> I'll take my chances. I'll wing it. Uh, where are we? Uh, Adam, for a sheepskin, for a sheepskin condom. <laughs> <laughs> Well, thank you very much, Adam. That's much appreciated. <laughs> Bless you. Uh, Dan Hughes, uh, has it rained much since arrived? No, it hasn't. Uh, I landed on January the 16th, 2024. I would say we've had two 
pretty damn good downpours of rain, which have lasted around about an hour. We've had a few light showers. That's pretty much it. Not a lot to speak of. It's been dry. It's been dry for like weeks. <laughs> you can get the, the odd little shower here and there, isolated shower, but no. Uh, if there weren't no deep wells around here, we'd have no water. We'd be in serious trouble big time because there's no there's no mains water here. The water is all coming out of deep wells. So uh, and there's a pump on these wells so we can pump the water out to fill the barrels up. So uh, when the rains do come, it'll be nice. Okay. Alan, I'm glad you are keeping well and doing well. I was chun. <laughs> well, thank you very much, Kay. Yeah, yeah. You've, you've got to, uh, wherever you go, you've got to sort of like do, do your normal stuff. Keep, keep your brush your teeth you know and keep washing yourself and keeping yourself fit and everything like that you can't stay in bed all day <laughs> so no I, I get up i go for walks i go into town i go here i go there i'm sort of like always always sort of like wandering around doing something so yeah uh mr john boy i started watching your videos when you moved to the philippines i had been thinking of giving it a go there as well my wife is originally from Tagum City, which is about an hour from Davao City. Yeah, I mean, uh, good on you if you do. I will say, however, if you do come out here, then uh, try and give it a good month if you can, if you've got the time to spare. Because uh, it's a wonderful world out here, but it, it's it's not for everyone. And uh, you've got to get used to the climate, that's for sure. That can that can do you in like obviously for me because of where i am the mosquitoes were a pain in the ass i finally pretty much got that they still bite me from time to time but it, I'm, I'm not getting bitten all over like i was before so uh you've got to kind of acclimatize yourself to to this country and to understand that it's not like britain not at all the food is uh not the kind of food you'd get in England. So uh, you've got to say to yourself, can can I really live out here? And uh, I'm still on a learning curve myself. I, I've only been here two months. If I'm going round the twist by the by six month mark, then I might be rethinking <laughs> what I'm doing here. But I'm, I'm just taking it day by day, nice and slow, and seeing how it all works out. And I'm hoping I can make it out here. But... Uh, it's a case of you can't you can't tell until you live it and uh, there's only one way to live it <laughs> so you you either make it or you won't it'll either be for you for you or it won't okay i was chucky yes i know i prefer i prefer the name chucky because they were some of my favorite films <laughs> Uh, white van man i love philippines but even if you're married with property you're treated like a foreigner with virtually no rights and still have to go to immigration and check in awesome place so yes yes that is the thing about this country unless you were to get proper citizenship uh, I believe one guy from Canada, he's, he's called Kulas. He has a big, big YouTube channel. He managed to get proper Filipino citizenship, but he's been living here for years. And it is, from what I can gather, incredibly difficult, it will, almost next to impossible to get. So uh, you're right. If you are a foreigner in this country, you will always be a foreigner. And that's the way it'll always be. Like I say, the Philippines is not England. And uh, it's a whole new ball game over here. <laughs> that's all I can say. Uh, Gerbork. Ger Hello. I'm from Ireland. 
over and back to Mindanao every few months. I'm back again next month for two months. We must meet up. I'm in Agusun del Sur. I don't know where that is, but I'd have to look it up. But thank you very much. Yeah, I'll definitely have a drink with you. It's, it's nice to meet people here. I'm not saying it's, it's actually incredibly easy to meet people here because everyone wants to talk to you. <laughs> but yeah, if you're over here, just give us a shout and I'll meet up with you. We'll go for a drink and a Krispy King or something like that. It'd be great. I'd love it. Thank you very much. Okay. What is with the, the face fungus? Are you going for the hippie look? I'm doing well, and I'm done. I've done nothing but rain in Devon. Yeah, I know it's been non-stop raining in England for bloody how long now? I do not know. <clears throat> no, I kind of like every four or five days. I'll have a shave. I'll have a wet shave. I don't have one of them like brawns that you just go around like that in the mornings. I only have wet shaves. So what I tend to do is I'll have a shower in the morning or something like that, and I'll have a shave, but only after like four or five days. So I kind of like don't like shaving too much, otherwise you get a rash. So I let it grow a little bit, and then I shave it off. I've never, ever had a moustache or a beard, and I probably never intend to. I just get a little bit of stubble from it <laughs> after, after a few days. Uh, Terry, good morning. Good morning to you, Terry. Thanks for joining in. Uh, John Boy, we are just north of Tagus. Tagus, two hours. Yeah, I'm going to have to look that place up. Uh, I had that with my wife, but she came here. She had a job, but I know she misses the Philippines, but the cost of the visa citizenship is thousands <coughs> yes yeah they certainly know how to make their money over here uh, Craig after stone is very damp Warwickshire yes everybody keeps telling me how rainy it is in England we need the right can't we pass some of the rain over this way the nice thing about it when it rains over here, it's warm rain. You can go and have a shower in it. Just had a look on Google, Google Maps. Uh, Alan, Ken would hate the UK. She might like Stonehenge. Uh, maybe. But our country is in the hands of thieves. Yes, yes we know that. We know that all too well. So I don't really know what to say. I can't, it's, it's just unbelievable how things are going over there. We need a political party to turn things around. But the way it's structured, I can't see that happening. Look what's just happened in, where was it, Rotherham with that George Galloway? It's just, do you know what, I, I just... I'm just sick and tired of the of the politicians over in England. It's it's just beyond belief. <clears throat> Craig, I'm in Devon and it's been nothing but raining. My <laughs> uh well I'm gonna carry on a little bit because I just had a few things to talk about. We'd had our little uh, encounter with the army at the checkpoint. <clears throat> so we, we get back to Maramag town and get back home and everything like that. Uh, but I was saying I was going to buy this DJI Osmo for my mobile phone. So if I'm walking around, say, one of the towns here and I've got my phone, rather than having shaky footage, I can have smooth footage. Plus, I'm not holding the phone in my hand, which is making it hotter as well. So I thought, I know what I'll do. I know for a fact, I, I searched on the internet, and where I am in Mindanao, they don't sell them, them little stabilizers anywhere. Not even Valencia City. I don't think they sell them over there either. 
So I thought, I know what I'll do. I'll go on Shopee and I'll order it off Shopee. Uh, Shopee's kind of like an Amazon sort of thing. So I make an account with Shopee. I then decide that, how can I put it? They take cash over here. It's, it's different to England. When you order something over here, say I order something, let's order this DJI stabilizer off Shopee, you can click the cash button and a courier will bring the item to you and you will pay him the cash for the item and the delivery. That's the way it works. But it just kept coming up with an error. Wouldn't do it. So I thought, okay, well, what if I pay by my debit card? So I entered my debit card details, which is Visa, into the Shopee website. And it said, sorry, we don't accept that card. <laughs> I don't believe this. As I found out later, the error was coming up when, they, when I was trying to pay for cash. Uh, I Googled the error code. And it basically, it basically means because I've set up an account with Shopee, and the item I want is just over a hundred pound. They won't, they won't accept that because it's too much. They think I might be a scammer or a bogus buyer or something like that. You've got to make a few purchases on low priced items first to build your account up, but they don't tell you that on the website. They probably do, but somewhere, but they don't, they don't make it obvious that you've got to do that. You've got to buy something that's pretty low priced. So I thought I gave up. I've just given up bothering on Shopee. I don't fancy going traipsing around Davos City or God knows where else to, to find a stabilizer. So uh, luckily, Ken's sister has a Shopee account, so she's ordered it on her account. So I'll just give her the cash. And when the courier drops it off to her, then she'll just pay him and that'll be it. So that's how to get around it or how I've got around it. But no, it's a nightmare. But the funny, the, the funny thing is, because this house doesn't have a number on it like in england you'd have a number on your door or something like that on that shoppy thing on shoppy website when you want to get the courier to come to you you've actually got to put a pin in the map of where your house is so <laughs> it's nuts i know anyway let, let me carry on <clears throat> my mom poor mondeo in the floods <laughs> yeah well don't go through too deep water uh, I'm in Devon also, blimey. I know they get a lot of rain down that way as well, but I mean, I, I was in Cambridgeshire and it's like flipping. We saw so much rain over Christmas and like the first few weeks in January, it's like the rain didn't want to stop and it's still raining and we're in flipping March now. Uh, Kenny, taxis are cheap and the drivers are honest in Davo. Yeah, that, I didn't know that because you know you hear all these stories, didn't you? You, you think you think they're going to charge you an extortionate taxi fare or just charge you a bloody ridiculous price and try and scam you. But when, when he told me the price, I thought, flipping egg, mate, you just, we've been in this car for like 20 minutes. We've got driven halfway across the freaking city and you're charging me the equivalent of like £2.50. I, I did give him a good tip. I mean, <laughs> I felt bad for him, and you know, in all honesty. So I gave him some extra, and he was, you know, he, he smiled. <laughs> he was happy after that. Uh, same here in Ireland. It's a beautiful country, but it needs a roof. <laughs> yeah. What is going on over there? So much rain. Uh, Paynton. I've been to Paynton. That's near Torquay, isn't it? Here, John Boy, I've been working on Dartmoor for the last month. My Mondeo has taken it all. Uh, Preston? Preston paint. Oh, is it Preston? Painting here, we have a good Thai restaurant. Ooh, I've not been into a Thai restaurant myself. Tor Torbay 
Asian food store. I go there to get the jasmine rice. Do you know, it's nice around that area. Torbay, Paynton, Torquay and all that. I went I went on holiday down there for like about three years on the run. <clears throat> right, I think we're getting to like the end of the comments. Uh, did you have to have anti-malaria? No, I've answered that. No. No, 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 nothing at all. Well, you done well to get up to 55 with that neat reading glasses. Yeah, no, I mean, it's, it's been, uh, <clears throat> it's been the last, I'd say the last couple years, I'd say. I'm kind of like squinting a bit when I'm, I'm looking at small text and that. So uh, now I'm over here. I may as well go to the opticians. It's probably cheaper than what it is in the UK. So uh, I've got the uh, dentist appointments as well. I'm sorting Tyler out with the dentist. He's getting everything done. Uh, we tried to have that done in the UK some years back, but we couldn't get it done at the time. And then when we could get it done, the flipping pandemic hit. So I'm getting him sorted out over here with, with, with his teeth. I'm getting myself sorted out with some reading glasses. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's all good fun. It gives me something to do, you know, because I'm not working or nothing. I can get up during the day and it's like, right, today I've got to go here. Tomorrow I've got to go there. So uh, I'm really looking forward to tomorrow, though, because we're going to this uh, water fountain in Dan Kangang, Dan Kagon, whatever, it, whatever it's called. So hopefully this is a proper fountain that's coming off the mountain. I'm going to be able to get in the pool of water below it and have the water fountain come off me. So I'm going to film that if, I, if, it, if it all works out and I'll put that on YouTube. Uh, AD, hello. Hello, I've been watching for a bit. Not love what you're doing and can you give advice for making a living there? And I am from the UK. <clears throat> I think if you wanted to make a living here, the answer would be don't even bother unless you have really got in with somebody over here if, if you wanted to come here and start a business you'd probably have to jump through shed loads of red tape and legislation uh, even if they'd let you work if you come over here uh, I think you'd be wasting your time because there's too many people doing too much of everything over here and you stand a bloody chance or you would get scammed and lose all your money. I'll give you a, a, a good example. The, the bus depot in Dabo. There are about seven or eight stalls opposite the bus depot. They are all selling exactly the same stuff. And every time you walk out of the bus depot near to them, they all come out, all the sellers come out and they call you over because they want you to buy something off their stall. And I'm thinking seven or eight shops it's the same as a shop seven or eight shops in a row all selling exactly the same stuff so you know you know even if you come over here and you did manage to start a business up you'd probably get another six or seven filipinos starting the same business up right next to you so no <laughs> my, my advice is if you come over here as an expat you've come over here to endure, to retire and enjoy your life or your retirement years not to work saying that obviously some people do make it take for instance the Turkish restaurant the guy who runs the Turkish restaurant he has got his restaurant business up and running and he's doing nicely so you can do it but I should think in this country it's hard and when I go into his restaurant there's never really many people in there so I don't think he makes a great fortune if you know what I mean so yeah it's something you'd really have to look into and it's not really my sort of like line of knowledge but my best advice to you would be to go on google or youtube and search 
working in the Philippines and and uh, or starting a business in the Philippines and <laughs> and see what kind of answers you can get from other people who who probably have done it. So uh, yeah, but I don't think it'd be an easy thing to do over here. Okay, small world, John Boy. Lol, do you have a Monday as well? Uh, Yeah, I'm the same, Alan. I would let Abby off that in my body. <laughs> yeah. oh, Ken's back. We'll see if she's got pork scratchings. Uh, might be worth looking at off-the-shelf reading glasses as I'm in the same position. I do a lot of soldering and electronics and think reading glasses may be all I need to. Yeah yeah definitely when you when you know the time's right to actually get some glasses i think you should do it i mean i'm gonna have to do it because it's like i i know my limits now and uh it's like now the light the sun's going down here it's like it's getting a bit dim and i'm starting to squint a bit more to read this mic because the writing on this computer is actually really tiny uh gavin any idea what the price per square meter is for land around Maramag? No idea at all. Ken? Get on. What is the price? What is the price per square meter for land around Maramag? Depend. If it's the center, that is twenty thousand peso every square meter. Twenty thousand pesos per square meter. Yeah. So that's uh, over here. It's cheaper. That's just under 300 pound a square meter, uh -huh. 280 to 270. Expensive 270 pound a square meter. I don't know. This is a chitteron. Thank you, Adam. That's, Adam that's right? the chitteron. Mm -hmm. Chitteron. Good. Pork scratchings. Pork skin. Pork skin. Right, she's so got two packs. So, yes, well, thank you. Now, now we know you can get it. But these are, they're quite big. Dang, look at the size of them. <laughs> anyway, I shall have a try of one of these while I'm here. If I can open the packet. Yeah, that, that's pork scratching. Hmm. I guess when you've got your pint of beer and you've got a packet of these, it's really nice. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, you need to get a wig ready for the next trip. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the amount of times I've burnt my head and then a few days later, all your skin starts flaking off. Because I never have a bloody hat when I go out for a day in the sun. And it normally happens in England as well. But I try to limit myself out in the sun now. Uh, a little jealous to see you in the sun when it snows here in Iceland. <laughs> mm -hmm. I used to love it when it snowed in England, but in Cambridge here, yeah, it's few and far between anymore. But as long as it's not that bloody wet snow, I like the fluffy snow that sticks to you and, and, and you know settles, so you, so it all looks bloody beautiful. <laughs> anyway i think i've basically said what i was going to say today uh so yeah we've got our acr well well they've approved us for our acr cards which gives us another two months extension but i'm not going to get the acr card for another full month so in one month's time i shall go back to devo city have a day out and go and pick the cards up. When I've got that ACR card, 
that means Tyler can do his driving lessons and <clears throat> we're actually inquiring about his student permit in the next next week we are rather than getting the card first because we're, we're beginning to think we might not need an ACR card to get a student permit but we'll see but once we've got our ACR cards I also <coughs> have got to uh, get a driving license over here because my UK driving license is only valid for three months from when I arrive in this country so I'm cutting it a bit fine. I've got to get the to the what they call the land transportation office and get a form to fill out so I can apply for a Filipino driving license. But I can't hand that in until I have my ACR card number. So it's all a bit of a pain. So but once once Tyler gets his a, ACR card, he can do his driving lessons. We've already paid for his driving lessons. But we can't take his lessons until, he, until they have his ACR card number. So that's that's why I'm sort of like desperate to get hold of it. Anyway, I'm going to wrap this up, guys. Uh, I don't know how many more comments there are. Uh, Rob, if you do decide to return to the UK, Alan, uh, would Ken come with you? No. No, she wouldn't come back to the UK. This This is her life here. It's like, it's like you can't take a duck out of water. And I just know that the UK would be a depressing place. I think if I went back to the UK anytime soon, I would probably hang myself. It just depresses me. So I'd have to have a completely new life or new take on life over there. Over here, I'm just, every day the sun is shining, it's warm, it's lovely. I think a lot of the problem with the UK is the weather. After you get to like my kind of age, it's cold, it's damp, it's miserable, it gets you down. I don't like it anymore. I like the nice warm weather. I like the sun on me. I, I just like it. I mean, it is a bit hot out here and it takes bloody a lot of getting used to, but I'm, I'm slowly getting there. <laughs> yeah. uh, Julian. Hi, Al. What about medical care? Nope. I'm winging it at the minute. <clears throat> I will look into that maybe some other time. But the way I figure it, because I have my house in England, if anything serious was to happen to me over at dear, like if I was in an accident and I was hospitalised and it was going to cost me a fortune, then I'd, I could deal with that. So, you know, I, I can pay the medical bill. Uh, but if, if I was to get any kind of illness, I'd have to go back to England and I would have to go on to the hospital in England. So uh, it's not it's not that I've, I've left England and I can't go back. So, but I don't, for the time I'm here at the minute, while I'm still in, the, in this like probation period, I'm not going to start looking at Medicare or taking out PhilHealth or anything like that and paying all, it's not cheap. I don't want to pay all that money and then find out I don't even use it and I've wasted all that money. So I know that my health is perfectly fine at the minute. So maybe in years to come, if I know that I'm starting to get problems, then I will either A, if I'm still here, I will probably sort something out or B, go back to England to get sorted. It's Easter... <laughs> it's Easter big out there, Alan. Uh, lots of Easter eggs and chocolate on the shelves in England. <laughs> you, you know something? It's just like straight after Christmas, the shelves start filling up with Easter eggs and all that. You, you won't see Easter eggs out here. In fact, you're lucky to even see chocolate out here. There is chocolate bars out here, but not much, not much at all. So I should actually leave. I've not even thought of that, but I'll, I'll be interested to see whether they do do Easter eggs. And I'll go into the supermarket tomorrow and have a look around and see, but I don't think they do. I'll tell you what else I noticed today and what, what went through my mind, because we were sat at a little restaurant and we were talking about this, that and the other. And uh, I just thought, we're, yeah, we're talking about shops. 
And I said to Tyler, do you know what? What I haven't seen one of out here, what in Huntingdon in England, there's loads of them. Everywhere you go in the town, there's loads of them. Over here, there's zero. And that's charity shops. Not one, not a single charity shop over here. And I thought, result. Because <laughs> if you ask me, a lot of them charity shops, I'd like to know where the charity goes. Uh, yeah, I think you're all talking amongst yourselves now. Uh, anyway, people, I'm going to call this live stream a day. I think we've been going for flipping heck, uh hour and 35 minutes or something like that. I made a few notes on on what the state of play was, kind of prices, what the bus has cost me from Maramag to Dabo, which is a three and a half hour journey. Uh, what the taxi fares have cost, the moped fares. When I go to Davo again, I am going to jump on the mopeds again and get the moped ride from the bus station to the immigration office, and I'm going to film it. I'm looking forward to that one because it was bloody brilliant. I loved, I loved it on the back of them mopeds, and them guys riding the mopeds, they were bloody skilled. <laughs> I get this phone then. Okay. Yeah, it was brilliant on them mopeds. Flipping loved it. I want to do it again. Uh, anyway. So, yeah, I will update things as we go along. I'm by, by no means an expert of how things work over here with the immigration and all that. I'm just doing it one step at a time. And when I get to the end of it or so far through it, then I'll just let you know how I've, been, how I've gone all the way along each step of the way. I hear you can get a six-month extension out here, but that's something I'll be looking at next time round and see if that is a possibility, but I don't know at the minute. I'll work that out when I get to it. Anyway, thank you, everybody who's joined in the live stream. It's been a pleasure. Thanks for all your comments. And uh, Mr. Bucket List, I've... I've actually kept that water bottle on the desk for the most part so cheers i'll see you all in the next one and hopefully in the next live stream i do i might do it actually walking around somewhere because i get kind of like it's boring sat here on a bloody uh, flipping deck chair staring at a computer i would much rather have my phone in my hand and be walking around somewhere and showing you the scenery. I'll probably do that next time. So, uh, oh, hang on a minute. Let me just put this one up. Uh, Adam, you better buy a cup. <laughs> better buy a couple, mate. She looks a little younger than than you. <laughs> oh, she's a little bit. She's forty. <laughs> anyway. Thank you, everybody, for watching. I shall see you all in the next one. See ya.